now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Come live from New York till midnight tonight. That's Lori Thompson. It's another week. It's another Lori Thompson. It's another outfit for Lori Thompson because, it's, of course, is. it's next week. She's not wearing the same clothes she wore last week. God, I, I am, know. but I don't change my clothes. I've I've given up life, actually. Wait, is that a, is that a huggy? Is that one of those like? No, I've given up um, life. Marjorie has one of these too, and she has the same pajama pants. <laughs> and 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 we have these. We got these great little slippers from yeah, what are uh, they like? Cause from uh, Bombas. Wanna... From Bombas. They're, they're Bombas, the ones that donate a, a pair of socks. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. Well, we these are these are. Uh, I don't know if I can show them to you. Well, here I'll take one off and I can show it to you. This and is do what they have they, things This on is what the they look for... like. This is what they oh, look like. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's and cute. it's like it's a slipper, but it's not like slippers, you know. And it's kind of like, like, it's like walking around. around in your socks. You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But they're, they're slippers, and they, uh, they, I'm trying these new ones, which I have to get used to, which have a double foam on the bottom, so they're especially soft. You know. Yay. So Marjorie has those. I have. She has these, but she got me one. And then uh, we have these. Um, I I don't know if I can stand up here and you can see it. I don't know. No, you can't see it. Oh well. They're uh, they're like uh, they're, it's not like they're pajama bottoms or anything. They're like just lounging pants, and she yeah, has yeah. and she has the same ones. And Very uh, cool. so we look disgustingly like a married couple. You, know. <laughs> you should do that as your Christmas card. Oh, I bet you probably do Hanukkah cards. Yeah. You, I was just thinking that would make such a cute Christmas photo of you two in your matching plaids. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, I, yeah, I think that uh, as far as the fashion transitions one has to make uh, as we age, um, I read an article that said, just find out what looks good on you. Don't be a slave to fashion. Just find out what your style is and then find selections that go with your style. You know, don't get the latest thing that everybody's wearing. Find out what's comfortable and what's your style. So, yeah. Very nice. You look like a lumberjack. He's a lumberjack and he's so cute. <laughs> one, of the, one of the signs of the, the leukemia I supposedly have is uh, that you uh, you lose weight. Oh. And, you know, the doctor asked me, uh, have, you, uh, have you lost weight? I have to go, I just bought a new pair of pants that are bigger. Okay, does that answer your <laughs> question? I wish I could lose weight. I could, if I could get cancer for just 10 minutes and, and lose cancer weight. Fat. You know. <laughs> Yeah, just like one of those, like, you know, uh, voluntary, just sign up by the hour counts. I, I do ask people about how I look because I, I don't look like I'm dying, do I? No. Okay. No, and you know what? No, you look healthy. I look healthy, okay. Because yeah. everybody that I see, like uh, Richard Lewis, if you watched him before, when he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm this year, you could tell the guy was on his way to death. Okay. Yeah. He just does not look healthy, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, then my friend Shecky, before he died, I noticed he was walking very slowly, like little measured steps, one in front of the other. And so I keep every time I walk, I try to walk a little more sprightly. I don't want yeah. that to happen to me. But you know, people who are are dying, they say, "Oh, he was so. How did? Why did he die? He was looking so good. He wasn't looking good. He was looking like he was dying." Why do people, in fact, when someone dies, they just launch this web of lies? You know, or they oh, look in the coffin and they say he looks great. I said, "No, no he doesn't. He's dead." He looks dead. He looks embalmed. You know, that's, I don't know why people do that, too. In fact, I've seen lately some people get up at funerals and say, let's not whitewash it. <laughs> So-and-so had their peccadilloes and their Well, uh, my friend uh, uh, Paul Krasner, who died, God, they all uh -huh. died. Where are they? Well, these are people who died, died. They died. 
He yeah, Jim Carroll is dead. That's the funny part he about is. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, um, um, uh, who was I talking about? <laughs> You're talking about uh, Paul. Get, oh, Paul. Hewitt. Paul uh, Krasner. Krasner really. He said that when he died, and I don't know if he did it. I'm hoping that he did. Said that he was going to have somebody come in and put clown makeup on his face, <laughs> so that when people came and looked at the open <laughs> casket, they'd come out of the funeral parlor laughing, right. and nobody would know why. They couldn't understand. <laughs> Paul's dead. What's he laughing about? He just came, and then they go in and they go, "Oh, I understand. Oh, that was uh, great. I get it." <laughs> well, I told but you I my don't, idea. I don't think he ever did it. Anyway, what? Not my idea that's going to make us money in our sleep. We can take it on Shark Tank. Well, uh, it is do your own funeral. Like, you know, like the old records they used to send when you do interviews, and mm -hmm. they also send you a script. And so on the record were cuts by Patsy Klein, you know, uh, were interview questions that she had answered for all these stations. And then you would just provide the, the announcer, and then the next cut would be. Played. Right. I remember that. In fact, people like you, though, I think started doing things like, like you knew you saw. Oh, I took one of those once, and then I changed the questions. They would send you out. Yes, they would say, you, "You want you want an interview with Jack Nicholson?" Yeah, okay. And then you get this disc or tape yeah. or whatever, and then it would uh, you'd have Jack Nicholson's voice answering the questions, and they were like little split spaces where you could splice yourself in. Yeah. So what I did is I changed the questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all started down in a little country church, yeah. and then and you instead yeah. of obviously the question was where did your singing career begin, yeah. but you would change that question to now I hear you had a little drinking problem at one point, Patsy, yeah. and what was you know where did that start? Yeah. Well, it all started in a little country. Church. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you, know, yeah, you remember those interviews? Huh? They don't do them anymore, but. Yeah, I I heard of them. I don't think I ever did one in radio, but uh, yeah, oh yeah, I knew of that. And in, in fact, when I listen to the radio, and it will they'll play a cut, an actuality if you used to call them, a cut of some celebrity, mm -hmm. and I go first of all, that's not the question that was asked. You can and you realize that you can make someone say anything, say anything, by just how you how you couch it. Yeah, you know, I've been spending a lot of time with you the last couple of days. The reason yeah. is I've been going onto my Roku channel and adding new videos of, of like vacations oh. I had taken and so on. Yeah. And, and you're on quite a few of them. I have you on one of us going to Topeka. And, oh yeah. Um, you know, so I you're uh, you're in quite a few of them. Uh, well, that'd be fun. And you you, you, you don't I have a Roku, that? do you? I don't. But I'll get one if you get one because I got a, a Gabnet channel. And you can find yeah. those videos there, you know. Okay, because I would love to. You always, it was fun to travel with you. You were always making videos. I never saw something. any of the countries I was in. I no, just saw them through a viewfinder. And, and you were uh, one of those people who went out and actually found things of, of note, you know, of yeah. like like architecturally and, and things, uh, tourist sites. Yeah. And I would be like, just walking around looking at the people the whole time. Otherwise. My trouble is now all I have is I have a GoPro. I have a very good GoPro, and I have a couple of other cameras, okay? Uh -huh. But I don't have any of the kind of cameras I used to shoot with with had zoom lenses and so on and so forth where I could be artistic with my photography. You really can't be as artistic with a GoPro because it's yeah. kind of more real time, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. What you took, I think, broadcast quality, you made broadcast quality little films. Well, that, that's what, what I've got. If you want to see it, if you've got a Roku, go to the Gabnet channel, and it's there under Gabnet Theater. I put up a whole bunch of new videos there. Oh, fun. Uh, I would totally do I, I that. I only had about five, five or four of my vacations, and now there are like 17 up there or something like that. Oh, they're so fun. That's what I really loved about traveling with you. We had something that we could look at and well, laugh I, at. One I, that I put up there was the one with the Bobby Slayton in the Alps uh, when we went to the uh, to uh, uh, Alberville for the yeah. Winter Olympics. I suddenly realized you didn't go with us, did you? I didn't go because that was, uh, I was at sleepaway camp. <laughs> you were in sleepaway camp, yeah. My, yeah, and so uh, I did not go get that, and that was when I really noticed. It was like, 
you got to give up some of your habits because they are getting in the way of you having a life, Thompson. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I did. But the others are like um, Ibiza. Well, we went to, um, you know, Barcelona. Barcelona. We're going to Barcelona on this next cruise. Yeah, um, oh, it, it, oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot wait. Do not take uh, do not take anything out on the streets with you that they can steal. That is oh, the biggest purse first. snatching uh, yeah. town in the well, world. Well, uh, Rick for Christmas wanted all this stuff is travel oriented, and I got him one of these packs. It's like a fanny pack, but you wear it up higher, so all the things of value we put in there, and then it fits under a coat, you know, a blazer. Yeah, something. it's under a coat, but if it's strapped to you, it's a little harder for them to get. A purse is something exactly. they can just, you know. That was our thinking, yeah. And I don't, um, plus I'm real cautious. Yeah. Ever since when we went to Greenwich Village, we did the show from New York yeah. for a week, and I got uh, r robbed inside the store in Greenwich Village, and I got my purse back. So ever since then, I've been very uh, aware, very you know, conscious of that. Uh, the Barcelona videos, where, I don't know where, I can't find the Barcelona video. I do have the video of, uh, do I have us in Ibiza? No, I don't have us in Ibiza. Well, it was the part of, it was, remember, we went to Barcelona, and then we went to Ibiza. I think yeah, we went but, to Ibiza. Uh, and I'm sure I have a video I did of Barcelona, but I can't find it anywhere. So it might but be in did. storage, might be in storage. Yeah. And the funniest, I can still see parts of that video in my head. There was one you did, uh, I'm Too Sexy for this song. And it was me shopping and trying on all this, like, sexy Spanish. Yep. Yeah, uh, where funny. is that one? I wonder, I've got to see if I can find it. Maybe I, can, maybe that, I have it. I don't know. But anyway, so, uh, and also it ended with you and I in bed together. Yes. And having <laughs> sex. Going crazy, <laughs> just... Oh, Lori, oh, Alex, and it goes blank, and you can just hear us yeah. going, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Use your imagination. Yeah. And did you know that Patton Oswalt has a book out? Um, the, re the reason I think of that, there was something yeah. in, yeah, I don't know uh, if, if we're mentioned at all or the station, but he did mention something you just spoke of that, that uh, made me think of it, and uh, the special that you did. And uh, so Patton Oswalt has written a really fun book, about his affection for movies and seeing old classic movies in their big screen format, like at the New Beverly down yeah. in Los Angeles. It's really fun. I think he talks a lot about San Francisco. I'm only like eight pages in. So, oh, okay. Um, maybe, it, maybe he'll mention but, us. Who knows? Maybe. You never know. That's We'll see. Because hope, one day I got you. a call from Patton. He's very nice. He's a nice guy. Uh, I got a call from Pat, and he said, Hi, it's Pat, and I just want to tell you I'm in San Francisco, and I'm shooting a, a special for HBO. And I just wanted to thank you, because I wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for you. You know, isn't that wonderful? Isn't and, and, and I just, I, I, you know, that really, that was one of the nicer things that somebody's done. The one, the best one was Robert Schimmel. You and, know, and when, you're, when you're out of work, and believe me, at times I was out of work. Mm -hmm. and and you're not at the radio station anymore, you don't hear from the comics. You don't hear from anybody. Right. All of a sudden, you don't got a job, you don't got friends. You know, they just disappear. It's not that they disappear, they just out of sight, out of mind, you know? Yeah. And some of them, quite frankly, felt they had no use for me anymore. Yeah, yeah. it makes you realize uh, the caliber of the person you're dealing with. I got, I, those experiences were very humbling for me. Yeah, I bet. But Robert Schimmel, when I was out of work, would always call me and say, let's have sweet? dinner. Let's have dinner. Yeah. How you doing? Or, or at least, at the very least, he would say, how you doing? Everything okay? You dealing with this all right? You know, listen, let's get together, whatever. Schimmel never forgot. Yeah. And, and that that's why I can so never forget Schimmel, you know? Yeah. Well, and... Then it seemed it seems a lot of the comics that we that we had on Norm Macdonald, who wasn't a lot, have passed away. Now, yeah. did Schimmel pass away? Yeah, yeah. Here's That's what right. happened with Schimmel. Schimmel had had cancer, many types of cancer. He had about three different types of cancer throughout his life. He wrote a book uh, that he <laughs> was promoting when he came in to see me at uh, Sirius XM. That was called "The Cancer on Five Dollars a Day," uh, <laughs> and. Um, he um, had cancer, 
And finally, you know, I get a call from somebody who says, have you heard Robert Schimmel's dead? And I went, well, you know, the cancer finally got him. I said, the cancer finally yeah. got him? He says, no, he was driving with his daughter and she crashed into a tree. Really? He died in a car crash. Isn't they irony like just Sam complete Kennedy? irony? Yeah. 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 You knew that there would everybody thought, well, there'll be drunk driving or high driving involved in Sam's well, death. Well, yeah. but somebody else's, wasn't it? When Sam was the Sam Kennedy, he, he was uh, he was driver. driving to Vegas, and it was mm -hmm. a drunk driver that hit his car. Yeah. You know, and, and we we said well, we always knew it was going to be drugs that would kill Sam. We just didn't realize they'd be in somebody else's body. <laughs> right. The mm -hmm. irony life is, I mean, the irony to me is just almost amusing. Sam was I mean, also was, very good to us, too. Oh, Sam was great. Yeah. I remember the first time I met him, it was like, um, I think you said, hey, this is my newswoman. Um, and he said, I'm doing this thing at Wolfgang's. You want to introduce me? And so that night I got to introduce him at uh, the old Wolfgang's. Yeah. And so that was very fun. He was just real. Yeah, very nice. Uh, a very nice guy. People don't realize yeah. how nice he was. How, however, if he didn't like you. Yeah. Like, Did he, you and he hated the same person. Oh, I know that we were. Who do we hate? Mark Marin. Mark Marin. Oh, yeah. But Marin, though, I've changed my tune on Marin just because I read, I've read a lot of interviews and he has a humility now that he didn't have then. And also, we were both drinking a lot. Not, not together. We didn't drink together. But I think we were both well, family. Well, Marin, uh, Marin yes. uh, I remember once you you came in. You were on the show, and Marin was doing something. And you finally just said, are there any people in Hollywood you haven't used yet? That was your <laughs> line. Uh, well, yeah, because, I mean, and I just, he wasn't paying you, I didn't think, any respect in his remarks. And he was sitting there reading the Chronicle while you were, you know, getting so you were doing the show. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, and I they were there was talk of him like filling in for you one day that week. And I just um, went into the general manager's office and I unloaded and I said, get me get a substitute for me on that day or those days because I'm not working. For him. Uh, anyway. And I, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just Mark Maron. Uh, Sam Kinison hated Mark Maron so much that. When Mark Maron was working at the Comedy Store, he was living at the Comedy Store house, which was up on comedy the hill from the Comedy Store, the Comedy Condo. And yeah. they would put people up there. And he was staying there kind of permanently. And uh, one day, Kinnison was up there, and he looked around, and he said, oh, that's Mark Maron's bed over there. So Mark, and so he walked over to Mark's bed, pulled out his dick, and peed all over the bed. That's how he and felt you know, about Mark Marin. And can you imagine if you're Marin coming in and no one had told you, or you didn't know that Sam and Pete in your bed, and so you lay down and you're falling asleep like, man, it smells like this in here. Yeah. <laughs> I got to take more showers. If, 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 if Sam didn't like you, he didn't like you. you mm -hmm. know? Very true. And he was... Um, he was from the Midwest. He was from Illinois. And when he was doing his preaching, mm -hmm. there is a good chance that I, as a teenager, might have been in some of his tent revivals. Well, he, he we was a child to, preacher as well, right? They had him working as a child was. preacher. And, and yeah. I, I really think that I have seen him. I mean, I have childhood glimpses. I think that I have seen him preach. Yeah, yeah maybe it's just something I've convinced myself of because of what I read and how familiar it sounded. Well, that's where but, he got his scream of pain, was that, that kind of preaching. That, ah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so when we had a minister that would have been about 12, and I was young then, so, I mean, I was younger, a little bit younger than Kennison. And um, so I remember someone coming, this Wonder Boy preacher, mm -hmm. coming to our place, and he was fire and brimstone. Yeah, yeah. So, but, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, these, I, yeah, I, I did a, a quick documentary once uh, for Midnight Blue on a, preacher a youth pre a kid preacher that was mm -hmm. and, and in fact strange we went it was up here at harlem at the avalon ballroom that the, they were doing their sh little show or whatever you want to call yeah. it and uh i'm interviewing the kid in the room where he's going to preach that night and i suddenly realized i'm in the room where malcolm x was killed 
Whoa. Was that, that had to be a mind blower. Yeah, I, would I suddenly realized, Ava Avalon Ballroom, yeah. This is the room where Mal Malcolm, yeah. They said, yes, this is the room Malcolm X got killed in. And was the minister Marjo Gortner? There Marjo was Gortner was a kid preacher, too. Yeah. And they're, they're a phenomenon, or they were at the time. Now, we're so media uh, jaded. Whatever happened you know, to Marjo <laughs> Gortner? He made a couple of movies, and then that was it. Probably owned. Yeah, he, he might own a couple Chick Fil A's in Sherman Oaks or something, but Could I don't be. know. He, yeah, that's, what you, that's what you want to own is a Chick Fil A. Yeah, <laughs> Sundays off. That and Sundays you can off. get yourself a what's what's that one where they have the uh, the Bible track on the bottom of the cup? Uh, oh yeah, the Bible verse. Yeah, um, it's a very famous uh, hamburger place in Southern California. I can't. Yeah, remember. Is it Fat Burger? Fa or no, what burger? No, something like what that. What yeah. would you, what'd you say? The, what was the other Whataburger. No. Whataburger. No. Uh, Something burger. I don't know. Anyway. Burger. Anyway. But on the bottom burger. of the cups, they got this, like, you know, 1041 or what? I don't know what those. John 316 is the. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know yeah, those. I don't. Book. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, still so know your, you still know your Bible, right? I do, somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Now, is, your, is your husband religious? He was raised Catholic and kind of just drifted away from any organized religion. Yeah. Now, when I, and I've gone to church pretty much through all my life, through my adult life, not as every Sunday morning as I did in my childhood, but uh, as an adult, well, I, what, I go to what church. What faith were you raised in? Uh, Assembly of God, Assembly which is a Pentecostal church. Yeah. yeah, it was at the, and so speaking in tongues, miracles, and things like that. They were also a very rule-oriented faith. See, once you get past Jewish, Catholic, Christian, uh, I'm pretty much lost. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I mean, I understand Muslim, I understand Buddhism and things like that, but of, of the Christian religions, I get lost. When you get to Assembly of God and all those other names they've got for churches, forget it. I'm right. lost. Yeah, um, it's and there are a lot of them, of God. Church of God, you know, Church of the Living God, Living Bible Church. There are a whole bunch of them, and it, you can it kind was of your first, basically. It, it was the first fad you ever got involved in. Yeah, yeah. and I, my mom went to Bible college. She went to a an Assembly of God Bible college, and the whole business. So we were dyed in the wool. Yeah. So how did what did your mother think of your life? My, uh, she never gave. She didn't. Once I started, she saw that I could have a career and a life. And my rebellion wouldn't get in the way, then she was cool with it. You she can make okay. money out of your rebellion. Yes, exactly. As long as she just wanted to make sure that I had a good livelihood and that I was going to be, I was going to have a good life. And right. once she saw that I could kind of parlay, you know, I could figure out. But what you I see, did. She, she's she was a good Christian. She was. That was her she, attitude. Yeah. You know, uh, it's yeah. my kid. I wish I want only want what's right for her. You know? Yeah, that's that was yeah. that my parents were very genuine in the faith, I think. Yeah, we weren't very yeah. religious in my family, but my parents let me know I was Jewish and you yeah. know, t we spent we did celebrate some of the holidays, you know, the ones where gifts were given. That's the ones we <laughs> Ramadan, isn't Ramadan coming up? Is it Monday? Ramadan? Ramadan starts I think on Monday, yeah. 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 I see I'm familiar with that holiday only because my best friend friend in high school yeah. was uh, Palestinian. I think Israel will look at it as a good time to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, then they can't pick up guns during Ramadan. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. You know. But I, I remember when we were in uh, junior high, the fasting, the fasting was kind of uh, unique. I mean, to, uh, to, to see brown people fasting was very unusual yeah. in small towns. Well, you know, Illinois. the thing is, what's strange, the, the Muslims right now are kind of pitted against the Jews. And the fact is, it's because we showed up wearing the same dress. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, right. they have, we have kosher, or they have halal. It's the same exact thing. It is, same principles. Yeah. Yeah. And and many of the holidays, which are Muslim holidays, are holidays that are also they have a Jewish holiday very much near it, you know. Yeah, well, so, I mean, geography explains a lot, and you know. Well, what's the old the old saying that somebody said once, and I. Oh, I know what it is. Is that geography? Geography is destiny. 
Yeah, and morality is defined by culture. Culture is defined by climate, and climate is defined by geography. So anytime I'm I'm poised to make a moral judgment on someone, I said no. Just it's remember, it's, the fault is the geography. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and gravity. And speaking of I geography, know. as we're as we're playing this, you're in Europe somewhere. You're going yeah, to Portugal, yeah, and then you're going Portugal. to Spain, I guess, huh? Yes, we're going to Spain, and we're going to end up in Rome. In Rome, that's the thing. I've never been. To, I've never been to Rome. That's on my bucket list. Oh well, maybe if they have city Wi-Fi, I can. We can do one of these from Rome. Yeah, we talked about. It. We're so involved last time. I just hadn't done enough research beforehand, yeah. and so now I have time. Well, yeah. you know, I would love to do them. But anyway, listen, we got to stop this one because it's time for us to go. But I'll see you again next week, okay? Okay. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, lovely. it's Lori Thompson. Yay! Yay! Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah. Okay, there was Lori Thompson, and she will be again. She'll be here next week, but actually she's in Portugal and we recorded a whole bunch of them, so, you know. Oh, hey, I forgot to do this. Oh, there we go. Now I'm so pretty, and I look gorgeous, and I'm attractive, and so on. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. So anyway, um, I was a little tired earlier tonight, but now I'm feeling kind of wide awake. So, you know, well, be that as it may. Um, but I had to take, I had a sweatshirt on. I had to take it off because it was getting too hot in here. I don't know why it gets hot in here because it's, what's the temperature outside? 30 something. Go figure. Anyway, uh, it's time now for us to go uh, check in with some people who uh, want to be on the program. And it's just a, uh, a handful of them. Uh, let me see here. I can admit all. Here comes Charlie Wallace, and here comes Brian Neary. He should be next. And then I push this, and then you can see everybody. Hello, guys. How are you? Great. Okay, I just want to know your mic's working. Thank you. Talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see here. Yeah. Okay, so that's all our, our people so far. Boy. I don't know what happens. All of a sudden, oh, here comes Alan. Alan's. Uh, oh, Alan to save the day. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah, yeah. He saves the day every time. Anyway, how how you doing? Uh, um, um, let's see here, Charlie. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep warm. It's been cold here in Texas the last few days. Really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's see here. And then your governor. Uh, kind of got it slapped to him by a lower court. The Supreme Court said that some law he made about they can just pick yeah. up people and try to deport them if they look Mexican. Uh, uh, the Supreme Court said, oh, that's fine, because the Supreme Court's lost all ideas of what yeah. is legal and not legal, okay? Um, we're the law of the land, so if we say it's so, it's so, right? No. Anyway... Uh, so then uh, uh, the lower court then reversed the Supreme Court. I don't know how you do that exactly, but they well, did. The Supreme Court threw it back to the lower court. So the lower court issued a stay. Oh, oh, really? I thought it was that the Supreme Court said what happened in Texas can happen in Texas. Isn't that a little bit what well, they say about right Isn't that what they say know. about Las Vegas? Las Vegas, yeah. 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 But what were you going to say, Charlie? Uh, you might—I don't know if you might be right about it. the way I heard it was that uh, they just decided not. They—they they pretty much decided to agree with whatever the lower court said. No, I think they—they—they they, they said that no, in Texas the thing the law they made was okay. Well, somehow and, or another, and, the yeah, lower and, court. And the lower, lower court, court, the lower court came back and ruled, I yeah. think, on a different set of things mm -hmm. that reversed it. So yeah. uh, anyway, you, you guys down there in Texas, you're crazy. Okay. I they mean, want to you, be a separate country. Uh, there was what, what was there any movement of that sort in recent years? No, not no organized movement like that. But they're acting like they're a separate country. We don't care what the feds want to do. We're going to do what we want to do. Well, it is the biggest state in the union, isn't it? 
Except for Alaska, yeah. It, it's small. It's smaller than Alaska. Oh, half the size of Alaska. Oh, really? Alaska. Huge. Oh, okay. All right. But there's nothing in Alaska. <laughs> yeah. So that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Especially people. There's not even a million people in Alaska. Yeah. And Brian, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. Is my mic good? My yeah, mic sound mic, better? Mic's terrific. Okay, yeah, I lowered it a little bit. It was, it was on automatic, it was a little high. Yeah. Uh, no, a uh, good weekend. Adrian had competition on Friday night. That's why I didn't call in. I yeah. sent you my permission slip, but maybe you didn't get it. Um, yeah, so she had competition, so they did really good. They, these these they, are the dance they, competitions that she does. Yeah. And yeah. you have so to it, take her to them because your car is the only one big enough to carry the pole. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to make sure I know where to record this section. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, for her. For her? <laughs> when I show her all the comments you made, yeah. Um, yeah, so, and then uh, they got invited back. Sunday night, they always have, like, a big grand finale show, and they pick, like, a few songs, and they pick their, their hip-hop song for them to do with everybody there. So it is pretty cool, so. And how was she? Oh, she's good. Yeah, she's awesome. She, she made one small mistake. <laughs> she... She's she danced this her third year. She never made a mistake. She made one wrong turn, and I didn't even notice it. And then she came off stage and she was crying, and it was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> oh that that can break. Yeah, your heart. a lot of pressure, but yeah. So um, yeah, all the kids have made mistakes. So it's okay. you know what you've got to do. You've got to you've got to get her to know that if she makes mistakes, ain't no big deal. Life goes on, you know, because kids, no, I yelled because at her. kids who are thrown you doing? well, kids who are thrown into competition can face some pretty terrible, terrible letdowns. Mm -hmm. And if you just tell her, don't worry about it, if you don't win, if you don't whatever, don't worry about it. There's the next day. And you just, if you don't feel you're good enough, you get better, right? And no, just I told encourage her, you know how much money I paid for this shit? <laughs> yeah, I could buy another car. I'm gonna get a newer McLaren. Wait a minute, what do you mean? How much does it cost for her to dance? No, it's about, it's about eight, thousand a year with everything oh, jesus holy moly God, well, you know, not not baseball bad. for that, that, that bad. <laughs> um no but because yeah, she has like tuition every month and then she has the competitions those are expensive and then she has costumes for those competitions so yeah mm. wow but she loves it she loves it so i i, I you know i i would take a loan out to do it every year if i had to so yeah, but well, you don't. Well, it, of course you would do it for her because you, uh, you, you, you're, you're, you really are. Uh, y you know what it is? I think the fact that you waited this long to have children I made agree. you a much better I father. Agree. You know, anybody, uh, anybody who does it in their twenties goes, "Oh, I'm saddled with these kids," you know, yeah. and you, you go, "It's a blessing." You know, in my 20s, I was listening to you every day. Yeah, well, you, but, but you've got, you see, what you've got going for you now is your life is pretty well set, you know? You've got a career, you make a, a good soon living. A soon-to-be wife. Huh? A soon-to-be wife. Wait, wait a minute, now, why did he just sign off here? What did you Don't say? Were you saying Don't something you shouldn't have said? Oh, I just... <laughs> We're teasing him about not getting married yet. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe, maybe another, another stretch here. Okay. Well. Okay. But yeah. anyways, yeah. No, no, no. I, I totally agree. I, I, I oh, actually, I said when I was younger, I said, and I, I hope, I, I said one good thing about having a kid later is that, yeah, then you have not that you have money, but you, you have more, you have, you can give your kids more opportunity. So then you can also use that as a, hey, you have to have good grades or you're not going to be going to dance, you know? So you do, I do have that leverage with her making sure, but she's, she automatically does good. She's not a teacher's pet, but she always helps a teacher and all that stuff. So she's very kind hearted. She's very, no, she's, she's very special. So yeah. Yeah. But that's cause she's your kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's so for her 16th anyway. birthday, she'll want a McLaren. Tell, tell us, say yeah. all that to us the first time you have to pick her up from jail. <laughs> now, now I've never cold. had to pick my kids up from jail. How many and times I've been pick you up from jail? <laughs> Only once. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to be picked up once, so she'll have leeway of one time. 
Yeah, I never went to jail, but I came close to it. And it was for a traffic ticket. It was for a traffic ticket in Chicago. I told the story. Oh, of course. And, and, and in Chicago, uh, they've got a rule, but when you um, uh, say you get a ticket, okay, that you turn over your driver's license to them, and then you, you drive on the ticket, okay? But I didn't have a Illinois driver's license because I had just moved there. Mm. So they said, well, you're just gonna have to pay cash. And this was like a Sunday evening. And this was in the days before ATMs. So yeah. where am I gonna get yeah. money, okay? Yeah. So I finally sent Ronnie home because she had a whole bunch of penny jars. Oh. And I think, oh the, I think the fine was like 50 bucks and we gave him $50 worth of pennies. I, wow. I said, you gotta take it, it's money. And they agreed and as I left, they were counting them. And as I left, one of the guys, one of the cops looks at me and goes, I would have done the same thing. You know? <laughs> he did it on purpose, right? Yeah, but uh, that was my, uh, but I, I almost wound up spending the night in jail. They said, if you can't come up with the money, you're going into the into the clink. So, and then Monday, no, I, Monday we could have gotten the money. What? I must have yeah. sucked living in Chicago in the 30s. <laughs> that, that was not me. If, not if, was, like me, you knew Al Capone. That's right. Yeah. After you met him, you didn't have to spend pennies. You just say, here's a couple hundred dollars to the cop. Leave me alone. Yeah, I had traffic tickets because I was a car guy, and you know back then it's like we don't care about burnouts and all that stuff. And I had a bunch of tickets, man. And I was dating this gorgeous Japanese American tall girl. Oh my god, tall girl, tall oh. Japanese American. Yeah, her dad was American, so she, yeah, she had the height for so gorgeous, gorgeous. Wait, what Trump. was she a tall girl? Thinking right now, but <laughs> so. I uh, dated her and I got arrested for that and I got put in yeah I got over to Elmwood over here and then by the night then I got released but it was like and then I went back to her but she actually picked me up and went out to her house stayed the night and then that was the last time I ever saw her she didn't want to see me again she thought wow. I was bad news really wow well, she, yeah you first you just start dating a guy and he goes to jail for something stupid like that yeah I deserved it but she was she was gorgeous you must have been, been a piece of work when you were younger. It sounds to me like you got into a lot of trouble. You know, I didn't I didn't have those problems because I was saving money for a house. Instead, I drove a four-door, 10-year-old Chevrolet instead of a hot rod. So you, you've always been the kind that saved your money? Yep. I bought, I bought my first house when I was 19. Really? How many homes are do you are you invested in? Because I know that you bought some of them with people. Well, the one that I live in now is worth close to two million, and you know, in the Bay Area here, and I just paid for. And um, I don't know. I own part of an apartment building in Portland, Oregon, a small senior living center of sixteen units or something that I inherited in Tucson. And as soon as I inherited, they were all nervous when I came down that I was going to raise their rent. And I said, you guys keep it up. Pull the weeds, change the light bulbs and stuff, and I won't raise your rates. And I didn't. And uh, I own a couple condos around here. Yeah. But you know, this, this area is so, so, so stupid. These houses, my friend, my friend lives down here. And, and it's in San Jose, and it's a three-bedroom, two-bath. And it's like 1,400 square feet, 6,000 foot square lot. And you know, that thing is $1.6 million. No shit, huh? And it's just a regular house, not, not nothing special at all. It's so stupid. It is, it's crazy. I live, in a, quite... I, I live in a tract home, yeah. a ranch style four bedroom house. And I live in a tract home that originally in 1960, Four sold for twenty two thousand, you know. And now, I mean, it, oh, I didn't buy it then. I was five years old. But you know, but when I bought it when I was nineteen, I, I paid seventy thousand five hundred. Whoever knew this thing would end up being two thousand dollars? I mean, two million dollars. Jesus, wow, it's outrageous. The yeah. Bay Area, yeah. You know, you got to be an executive or own a McLaren to live around here. <laughs> or, or a white van. 
<laughs> well, my mother, my mother, you know, she owned a home in Marin. When my father died, it was her home. And it was in San Anselmo up on Scenic mm -hmm. Avenue. Yeah. And uh, she decided to sell it because she could get $39,000 for it. Yeah. And I told her, Mom, don't sell it. You know, because I mean, I grew up in that home and I wanted to save it. I said, I have enough, I make enough money here in New York. Let me send you a check every month for the payment. Now, your Uncle Lou, my Uncle Lou, my, everybody has an Uncle Lou, right? Uh, my Uncle Lou told her to get rid of it, that, you know, it wasn't going to be worth anything and that she, he could take the money and invest it for her. Well, she did that and he invested it for her and had, she had a slight piddling, dribbling amount of money coming in. Meanwhile, the housing market took a turn in Marin County, not for the worse, for the better, and two years later, that home was worth 300000 Now, today, I have no idea what that house is worth, but I'd say it's at least $2 million. You yeah, know the address? I'll look it up on Zillow. 179 Scenic Avenue. Hold on just a minute. There you go. Yeah, you can find everything through Zillow. <laughs> Well, no, we can find how much that house is worth now. I'd like to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents you bought it. Every, my, every house around it. It's my crazy. parents bought it for nine thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, and, and it was could, he could well. It was a two story. If it was sale, you could actually see you could actually see the progression of the sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is he? Yeah, you can. It's a nineteen hundred square feet. It's uh, fifteen hundred and seventy-seven, uh, one million five hundred seventy-seven dollars. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah you should have kept it. I wasn't off. I said about two million. You yeah, know? in yeah. San Anselmo, mm -hmm. three bedroom, two bath, nineteen hundred square feet. Three bedroom? Yeah, it says three. They must have added. I think they're they. Always, wait, I think they're they. Not always accurate. No, I, no, I, I think they added a bedroom. If I remember seeing the place in recent years. They had added a, a kind of an extension to the yeah. house. Probably. Definitely. It looks very nice. It looks like there's a, if you look at the backyard, there's a, a lot of greenery and stuff that I'm sure is a fire hazard. That was a, uh, that was actually a, a garden where we grew vegetables and corn and things like that. And it no, had no, no. several terraces on it. And I guess somebody changed it. I'm sure they it did it stopped it from being a doesn't look like they run out garden. of cabinets in the kitchen you know they got all these pictures really nice. really yeah. send me that link i would love to see what it looks like inside is there still a um, is there still a breakfast bar there uh there's a breakfast area i guess i get there's a like a little nook where you can eat well, there's a dining room yeah i'll send you the link yeah it was a two-story house and it uh, had only two bedrooms, two, one on either side of the bottom, and then upstairs was a living room and a dining room and a huge kitchen, and then you had this this uh, this deck that went all the way around the house on both levels. It was really a very nice house that my parents got there. So yeah, they they uh, so uh, Redfin rate says this house is worth uh, one point six. Two zero. Mm hmm. 1900, two bedroom, three bed. It's off the market. Oh, I saw a sign that said for sale. Let's see when the last time this sold, what it sold for. It tells you that. Um, hold on. A minute. $3.75. <laughs> Probably. In 2012, it sold for uh, 580000 Boy, somebody made a good, good, good uh, investment. And uh, let's see, before 2012, I don't, I don't know. It's going to go back. 2007, it sold for 800,000. Somebody took a beating. Mm -hmm. um, in 1992, which is the farthest they go back in public records, it sold for 280,000. 1992. When did 1992? It's the farthest they go back. Trying to I'll remember why my mother moved out of there. My mother moved out of there around that time, I think. I don't know. I, I will remember. send you this link. So where is everybody tonight? You know, this is yeah, getting Yeah, this is uh this is getting to me, you know. Why should I do a show on Wednesday? Why should I do it on Thursday? You know, why should I do it on Friday? You know, I I do it for you guys, really, now. And we appreciate it. Yeah. 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 
But, uh, you know, I mean, the Monday show this week was extraordinary. We had something like 15, 16 people called. You know, it was huge. Um, I said nice those people were interesting. Huh? What do you mean? They're... <laughs> I said, wouldn't it be interesting if those people were wouldn't that be nice if those people were interesting? Well, uh, one, they are, of, one, they are. one of them they're was Kevin people. and one of them was Brian, okay? They're, they're, they're okay, they're okay. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. We also had on the general manager that fired me twice. Yeah, that was very interesting. Boy, that was... Yeah, that's um, Ed Cramp over at uh, Live 105. He was my general manager and he fired me once. And then he brought me back uh, when he was operating... Uh, uh, KNEW was a talk station and he brought me over to try and do a morning show there and then he had to get rid of me again because the bosses back in Georgia didn't like uh, what I was doing because I was a left winger okay so uh, uh, he had to let me go a second time so I said the only guys who fired me twice that I still like and still talk to so he called that show so that was pretty interesting, don't you think, yeah. uh, 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 oh, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, Kevin. By the way, the email is on its way to you. Oh, really? It's an Alex at, and I don't want to say it all. So, Alex at gabnet.net Al is my yeah. email address. Yeah, that's what, it's, it's, that's I, what it's, I didn't know if you wanted it broadcast. That's correct. That's what I have. I, I, was, I, was, I was listening to something the other day that got me a little pissed <laughs> off. I, I was mentioning this to Albert today, so probably hear us talk about it tomorrow. Or maybe next week. Um, I was I, I came across a piece of video that I have, which was a a piece of video of Howard Stern coming on my show in New York. I remember that. Oh. You remember that when that happened? No, I remember that on YouTube. It's on YouTube. They walked yeah, in your studio. Yeah. So I saw that, yeah. so I am thinking about putting that up on my my uh, uh, Roku channel. But I'm, I went back and looked at it, and it had what he was doing in his studio before that happened. Mm -hmm. And he's like doing this and complaining about me and how I was putting down this guy named, I can't remember his name now. But he, he went and kind of pranked uh, Wiener when he was giving his press conference to give up his uh, place in Congress. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I complained that I just felt that, come on, the guy had a bad enough thing going for him. He didn't have to insult him like that. Mm -hmm. And so but, but, uh, Howard gets mad, okay? And uh, he then starts complaining about me, and he says, you know, his real name is Bennett Schwarzman. <laughs> he said he's, he's so in denial that he's Jewish that he can't use his real name on the air. Tell me, did you know my name was Bennett Schwarzman when you listened to me in San Francisco? Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. We, what I used to do a thing called Summer uh, Supper with Schwarzman. Oh yeah, Supper with Schwarzman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. I ever, never, for one minute denied that. What happened to Brian? Uh, never denied for one minute that I, you know, that my name was Bennett Schwarzman. Just in the days when I started. If you had a name that was 11 yeah. letters long, you didn't do it. Showbiz names had to be shorter than that. So that's why I came up with Alex Bennett. Um, I wasn't lucky to have a name like Stern, which is five letters, yeah. you know. And also I didn't come up in a time where you could use a name that was like Schwarzman, that unwieldy. And I don't think I would even use it today. Uh, only because nobody ever spells it right. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever pronounces it correctly. You know. So anyway, that that's the... Um, um, so I so was, anyhow, I didn't know if you wanted your email address broadcast. I have several of them for you, but that's the one I Well, use. you don't give out the other ones, but you give out that one. I have other ones that I use for, like, you know, money stuff and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I do the same thing. So anyhow, yeah, you but got that, again, my and, Gmail account. So yeah, don't give those other emails to Alan because he'll shout it out over the air. No, I won't. That, yeah. I, I won't well, Alan, Alan kind of ruins everybody's cover on everything. If I have a suggestion to any of you on this panel, don't ever tell 
Alan anything you don't want anybody else to know. And you know I where get, I learned that from? <laughs> from <laughs> what Phil. about Phil? Phil would, Phil. would read Phil Tony's uh, famous messages. <laughs> Phil was famous for what? Didn't he read Tim, Tony's messages? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that, that's one thing. You know, I, I got him. <laughs> there was a, in 2020, 21, 21, there was an ammo crisis. And so we were doing target practice, and I told him, I have a connection. I'll get you the ammo. Ammo crisis? Huh? Ammo. ammo. Yeah. I know an ammo crisis, but I, I just can't imagine this country running out of bullets. It's still, well, it's still, it's actually starting again because we're supplying, uh, you know, for the military. I, we don't need to get with it. Anyhow, okay. I said to Phil, when you get up there, don't talk about the ammo that I, that I arranged from this ammo dealer in San Jose. Don't say a thing. He's up there and he says, oh, by the somebody said, where'd you get all the ammo? And he says, only Alan got it for me. He told us all about it. He was up in Reno. I'm sure. You know? Yeah. You know, I, 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 well, I, yeah, but, you know, the other day you, you said something here on the air about Phil that he didn't want anybody to know. Well, then he needs to stop saying things about me. What? He doesn't say what, stuff what, about what you. Did he say, what did he say that nobody's supposed to know? Yeah, really, what did he say? It was something about the the work that's being done on a certain portion of his anatomy. <laughs> and he didn't want it, anybody to know it. You know, didn't want, got, the 20, you didn't want the 20 people watching to know it? No, if you <laughs> want to torture it out of me, I got a list of five things that he doesn't want me well, to Well, he said he's dating right somebody now. now, and he doesn't want her to know. Oh, well, he needs to wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy, I didn't spill the beans on that. Boy, I'm glad. That's, now, now I only have a list of four things he doesn't want to talk about. What, what do you mean? Do you, do you know he's going out now with somebody? Of course. Oh, okay. You know, I, 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 I knew about it five minutes after he met her. I'm lost. And uh, then, then Better the, off. the day later, Tony tells me, hey, by the way, I'm like, you know, Tony, you can stop sending me messages. Wait a minute. Tony knew? Tony, Tony knew? Yeah. Before I did? <laughs> yes, so. Oh, now my God. Now you know where to leave Phil at the bottom of your will. It, 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 he's going to be the index. Index, yeah. 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 Alex, I need, I need some guidance. I need you to tell me somehow where I should, what airport I should land and where I should stay and all that stuff. Where? For New York. I want to go to New York uh, coming up. Oh, when? When are you coming? Like April or May. Oh, are you going to come by and see us? Yes, yes. Yeah. You guys are near Morningside uh, Morningside Park, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're near Morningside Park. But it's not, I'm it's just down a couple the address, miles. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> let, I'll let you do that. I, I know the address because I've sent them stuff in Amazon. So have I. So I'll have also, I. You, I yeah, don't have so, to kill, give people my exact I won't, I won't address, but the address I'm at is a place called Graham uh a court and if you look up graham court it you, it gives the address there i can give you the address right now but there are like 200 apartments here so try and find mine no yeah, then you just well. have to go watch the movie uh what was the movie huh new, new jack city new or jack, new jack city, city. New jack right. city yeah that's right and then just look at the map and then see where he's pointing up there and then you know where your kitchen is that's yeah, there you go. oh yeah oh, yeah oh, i forgot about that <laughs> It seems that in New Jack City, the guys are going to make a crack lab, and uh, Denzel, is it Denzel Washington? What's his name? Not Denzel Washington, uh, by the other guy. Uh, yeah. The only um, other, yeah, the only other Wesley black. Wesley Snipes or something? Yeah, yeah. Wesley Snipes. Wesley yeah. Snipes is yeah. telling people, here's where we're going to build the crack lab, and he points to a place on the uh, on a drawing of the building, and it's our kitchen. Oh, that's the drawing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. so if you want to know where so I live, go, just rent, uh, what? Yeah, so we piece everything together. We go on Google's map, and then we go get the movie, and we'll, we'll know exactly where you live. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I or, or Alan could just say the address. Well, I have big, big, heavy doors here, by mm. the way. Yeah. Yeah, Phil puts them up all the time, so everybody can find your address in the building. <laughs> It'll take them a half hour to go up the elevator, I, I hear. Yeah. Yeah, by the, time they get, I, by the I time they by the time they get up here, they will have aged twenty years. 
That's how slow the elevator is. <laughs> you know. Oh, you live in an apartment house that the people who own the apartment house don't take care of it. You know? Only oh, well, they, it's hard to take care of a place that big when you're renting out your apartments for five hundred dollars a month. No, they're not renting out apartments for five hundred dollars <laughs> a month here. I they're know. subleasing them. They're subleasing them for five hundred. That's right. That's Actually, <laughs> the there are apartments in this building going for seven thousand dollars a month, eight thousand dollars a month. Right. That's yeah. not his best couple here. Well, that's, that's they have the fast elevator there. Hey, listen, they, you know, I live in an apartment here that's got, uh, let's see, a kitchen, a pantry, a, two bathrooms. One is a half bath, admittedly. We have a foyer, a living room, a dining room, a hallway, uh, three bedrooms. Is that okay? Is that a lot? Is that big enough? Twenty five hundred yeah. square feet. Twenty five hundred yeah. square feet. That's bigger than my house. I know. Yeah. And when you were sick, at three hundred. Oh, on the uh, on the on the floor of the bathroom, you have a good idea how many tiles on that floor too, don't you? I, I was counting those tiles as my nose was down in the yeah. No, I I that was that was quite a thing. Slipping in a bathroom is not fun. I didn't slip in the bathroom. Oh. What happened was I have positional vertigo, but I didn't realize it at the time. And what I did was I kind of whirled around, hit my head on the sink. And then wound up on the ground, and I, I, I was very nauseous for some reason, horribly mm. nauseous, and I couldn't get my, I couldn't get up off the, off, off the uh, floor of the, and so we called a, an ambulance, and that they rushed me to uh, the hospital, and I spent uh, seven, eight hours there. Wow. Did you figure out how much that ride was, the ambulance ride? I don't know, but I had insurance, so I. Yeah, 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 I know, but I, I think was, it was like five hundred dollars or something. Oh really? That's not Five six hundred something. Yeah, yeah. I, I think mine was more than that twenty years ago. Oh really? Well, maybe it was more. I don't know. Excuse me. I'll go into the bathroom, hit my head again, take an ambulance, <laughs> get the bill, this, and let you know how time much hit it your is. Your head on the toilet, so you know we can see the damage. Really? Yeah, I passed out umpiring softball one day, and they took me to the emergency room. And I think it was over a thousand dollars for the ambulance. Oh really? That might have been. It might have been more. It might have been fifteen hundred. I don't know. And that was nineteen ninety-eight. I don't care. I don't pay for it. The insurance company does. So. Wait, wait, can can oh, we go back, please? Sorry. What happened, Charlie? What happened? The insurance company paid for it. No, but what happened to you? I did ten straight games in a hundred and eight degree temperature, and I passed out. Oh my and god! What a murder. pussy! What a pussy! Yeah, yeah. yeah really. <laughs> And he was a youngster. That was nineteen. Yeah, yeah, I was a kid back then. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, yeah. Well, I. Uh, the problem I, was is after the ninth game, his bladder had almost exploded because he had to urinate. <laughs> well, we've had. That was the whole deal. I didn't want to have to pee during the, <laughs> so, so I didn't, didn't drink hydrate. Water. You didn't well, hydrate. here, here's the thing. I, uh, um, you know, um, I went to the hospital in an ambulance. Marjorie has also gone into the hospital in an ambulance. Well, she, I think she, um, I think it was for her leg. I think when she was tripped by somebody or whatever. Oh yeah. And she was just very sick, and uh, so I, we, she was in pain. We had to get an ambulance, take her to the, uh, to the hospital, uh, and then my thing was the hospital as well, and. Um, <laughs> The only thing that pissed me off about both those situations, you take the ambulance, you pay maybe, what, $1,500 for your ambulance. Mm -hmm. What would you like to have happen with that ambulance? <laughs> you would like to have a siren going. Oh. Then did, they doubled the price. Did you, yeah. did, did you have a siren going when you went? I was unconscious, so I didn't know. Oh, okay. They took me I, to the hospital. the hospital. I'm nauseous. I'm in all... They, they don't, no, no siren. What? I'm going, turn on the goddamn siren for I'm pay, for what I'm paying for this. Give me a goddamn siren. <laughs> you know? And, and with Marjorie, no siren. Yeah. Uh, I, well, New York has enough noise pollution, but, yeah. you know, I've rode in a lot of ambulances, never as a patient. Yeah. Well, guarding well, the arrestee yeah. or something, you know? Yeah. Or, one time a little child went. I was going to say the reason why the ambulance picked you up is that was the only way you could get to dinner. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, donuts. 
Donuts. Absolutely. Yeah. Donuts you, you, and you, coffee. You had to, you had to accompany... Uh, um, you had to accompany... What? Uh, people that you arrested in the, in the ambulance? Sometimes, yeah. Really? Did you have to handcuff them while Did they you... were in the ambulance? Well, that's the problem, is in order for them to work on these people, you got to leave them pretty much unrestrained. If they were restrained in the ambulance... Then you just follow them in your car or have somebody else follow them in the car. Oh, so you had to be in the ambulance to be able to wrestle yeah. them to the ground if they... I was talking to one guy, and he and I said, you know, you really, you, you shouldn't have shot that. But I think I said you shouldn't have shot that lady. He says, I didn't shoot a lady. I shot her husband. <laughs> Stupid admission of guilt, huh, you dumbo? <laughs> You want to know something? Tonight on the news, tonight on the news, they had this story about this guy. I can't remember where it was now, somewhere in the south, where he was uh, he was in jail, and they were moving from one place to another. And a friend of his came along with a gun, and shot at the cops, got his friend, and they got in the car and got away. Well, they showed a picture of this guy, okay, that that the, the guy picked up. And he has got facial tattoos like crazy. And down his neck and on his body. And I'm going, you know, if you're going to be a criminal, mm -hmm. you really don't want any identifying marks. And you don't put them on there yourself. You know? And I thought, what kind of a stupid asshole does whatever this guy did and has tattoos like that? What did he look like? Well, I couldn't tell what his face looked like because it was completely covered by tattoos. Yeah, a lot of gangsters. MS-13 is famous for that. <clears throat> yeah. A lot, of, a lot of facial tattoos. You know, they, they, they're getting... Like the homies they, that wear their pants down around their ankles and they I try to run. I don't understand that, Kevin. Can you explain <laughs> that to me? <laughs> still, still, they still, still. try still. to run. Yeah. yeah I, I saw this kid. <clears throat> I saw this kid like two weeks ago at the gas station and same thing, had his pants down to like his mid thighs. And I'm like, you, you know what I do with those there? kids? I look at them and I go, Hey cutie, you know what that means? Yeah. Yeah. You're available. I go, I, I just got out of jail. You're looking kind of good right now. <laughs> them down they look at ankle. me like some creepy old man. I go, Oh yeah. You know what I that means, get... right? The guy says, Oh, you pull up says... your pants, bro. That's like the guy, the guy says to his girlfriend in the car, I've only got four gallons out of the 40 in the truck, but we're leaving now. <laughs> After you make a comment like that to him, he says, we'll go somewhere else and get the rest of the gas. I just yeah. pull the pants them and then run, and then they're like the penguin, right? And they can't fall. And they can't <laughs> they keep falling. It's just funny as shit. I asked one stupid kid, I said, you know, how do you run from the police like that? I mean, I was... No, I just want to know why they never. Says, why they? Says, I see them walking the down the street, the but I want to know why, why they never fall. You know. Well, I know. I don't know how they do that. I mean, they're de they must be designed that way or something. I, I don't know. No, they fall and they just well, keep they, pulling yeah. them up. Really, I've never noticed any of them fall. Yeah, yeah, I they, don't see They keep them dropping and they keep pulling them up. You know what I always yeah. liked? What I always thought would be great to be is a heroin addict. And here's the reason why. Have you ever seen a heroin addict fall? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, they, start, they start, they start they sinking. They fall in slow they, motion. They start sinking to the ground. And just as you think they're about ready to keel over, they pop right back up again. <laughs> and then they go oh, like this. Up. And then they... Like uh, slow uh, slammies. Uh, and pop back up again. And, and when, God, they and show when those on sitting there, they, it's called nodding out. They're like this. Yeah. And no, this no. isn't nodding. This is actually. Oh, I've seen them when they fall. It's like in slow motion. No, but they're not slow. They don't never fall. They and, they, and some of them lean over like they're going to tumble ass over tea, tea kettle and they're back up and they're like, oh, man, that must be a great drug. Mm, geez. <laughs> like me when no. I'm watching TV. What? No, I've seen some of those videos where those people are like that, and it's like crazy. I uh, really bad. Really yeah, sad. most of those guys have newer McLarens than you. <laughs> Why do you give him a bad time about his McLaren? Why Nothing. do you do that? He, he, he makes jokes about it. He makes jokes about my. To van. begin with, he works in Silicon <laughs> Valley. Van is scary. He works at a, at in Silicon Valley, which ostensibly at a at a tech company, right? 
Yes. And 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 people who work at tech companies buy big, expensive sports cars. I don't know why, but they do. Every time well, I work for one of those guys, I like the place up in uh, up in uh, Sacramento where I used to go all the time. Uh, uh, it, it was like play TV or whatever. Play TV, yeah. Those people um, playing corporated was the name of the company. He's a car and, guy, and he enjoys a nice sports car. I have no problem and with it. They all had sports cars. If and, I could, fit and depending in upon, thing, and I'd probably have one too. And depending upon how high up you were in the company, the more expensive the sports car. I mean, they all had sports cars, but maybe it would start with like, uh, you know, an NSX. Those were that was the low rent one, okay, and then it would go all the way up to Lamborghinis, which, as I've said before, is the roughest ride I've ever. You know, is that supposed to be a luxury car? No, it's just an McLaren expensive. McLaren is the most comfortable sports car. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, how we many people? A, how many in people? The parking lot. He offered to let me sit in it, but we didn't have no, a place to get me out of the damn thing again. Well, the many, only reason I I offered Alan to sit in it is because it's a convertible. If we had to, we could put the top down and get a cherry picker to get me. <laughs> That's right. <Thinking> ahead. <laughs> That would have gone viral. He's jealous of your McLaren, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a nice looking car. Like, what kind of car do you have, Mr. I Got Bucks? <laughs> you want to see it? A 40 Tonneau line. A it's Ford? got a custom interior. Yeah. All right. You're planning it's to get laid anytime rug. soon with that car? A short shag rug, actually. <laughs> oh, short shag. <laughs> It's easier to clean up afterwards, right? Absolutely. You know the Jeffrey Dahmer story, you know, the van that he had? Yeah. <laughs> that he stuffed the kids in, <laughs> the people in, that's that's the van. <laughs> Except for mine has a ticket machine on the outside. You pull the number. It says serving, now serving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, anyway. Um, anything happening in the news that's worth talking about? Yeah. Trump's having a hard time getting money, looks like. Yeah, it, 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 he's supposed to have a lot it. Of people by have turned him down for a loan. Thirty different banks. Yeah, thirty. Oh my god, thirty of them, like, including Zurich and a lot of big banks. And, and one of the, well, they've done business with him before. Yeah, you know, and and, and, bank, and, 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 and and while he does have collateral, I mean, he has assets. Uh, they don't want them. They say they don't want. They won't take uh, Trump Tower as, as collateral. He's going to have to satisfy this somehow. Forget about the the, the money he owes to, to, to contest the guilty plea. He's got to contest that, and the court's going to go after some of those buildings. Well, but he can't. Con he no, can't, he, he can't. He's, we're talking about the appeal. He can't come oh, up. He wants oh. to appeal. Right. And right. he has to come up with 110% for the appeal, and they won't fund it. Yeah. Nope. And because they don't see anything that's worth, uh, they just they don't even want to take the collateral, okay. Nope. Uh, so uh, he's he's in a lot of trouble. I mean, as of Monday, uh, Letitia James has said the first thing she's going after is what five hundred Wall Street, that big building he's got down in Wall Street, the, oh, not yeah. five hundred Wall Street. It's got some name, but it's worth five hundred uh, million dollars. It's the most expensive of his properties. Well, and the problem is, you know, he's probably saying, oh, this is $500 million worth of building. And they're saying, no, it's only $100 million. And well, well, no, but he, you know, he would go after, I, if I were her, I would go, if I, I would go after Trump Tower. It's only worth $160 million, But, but how just absolutely demoralizing would that be to Trump <laughs> to lose Trump Tower? You know, you could send him back his letters. And then, mm -hmm. then pull down his name off of it and replace it with Letitia James. Yeah, and send yeah. him back his T R U M P on yeah. a truck. <laughs> yeah, right. It's one at a time. Here's your T. Yeah. Or maybe in no particular order, like the M first and yeah, the P. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what about the jet that he flies around in that says Trump? That's got to be an asset. Well, that that is probably right now. I think that's probably being subsidized by the. Uh, of the Republican Party, the RNC, yeah, the RNC. Um, Those are all pretty old jets. Too. They're old they jets. Are. It's, it's yeah. the 757, the big one. Yeah, he flies pretty around and says Trump on it, and then it's a 25. And I think that some of them are leased. Yeah. So I think Kevin's right. I think some of them are leased. Yeah, 
But I mean, if he if he loses, if he has to, you know, put if that, if he loses a lot of that property, he's not, uh, you know. I mean, what are these people going to think of him now? Is it what happened, how, to Mr. How billionaire? How's he going to fund his campaign? He could get the money, believe it or not, from his son-in-law, uh, J Kushner. Because yeah. Kushner's worth a couple of billion, isn't he? Yeah, he At just got two billion from the Saudis. Yeah, okay. so he he could he could take care of it, but I don't think he's going to. So, no, yeah. it's a losing proposition. Would you yeah, would you would you, like would you loan him money? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but this is a guy who went around for the longest time. Oh, you know, I'm worth six billion dollars. You know, made his career off of being a billionaire. And we find out now, as as I knew for years, that he really wasn't a billionaire. Yeah. You know, it was all on paper. It wasn't in cash. And that if he had to come up with the cash, he couldn't. If he had, if he was a billionaire, he could come up with this money himself by just writing the check. Absolutely. You know, he wouldn't want to, but he could. Yep. You know, and um, running this campaign is going to be real expensive for president. And he's got no money. But he, what he's doing is he's eating up all of the money he's gotten from his minions. Yes. Uh, he spent on uh, defending himself. Lawyers. Yeah. On lawyers. He, nobody says he can't spend it on lawyers, but he's spending it on lawyers. And you know something? These lawyers, you would think, are getting really rich. Nobody wants to be his lawyer anymore. Because what no. happens is you send him a bill, and he never sends you any money back. Yeah. It sends him an IOU. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm wondering if he's gonna. Oh, here's Steve Fox. Oh, I didn't know he was here. I didn't see him. Ah, here. Steve Fox. We haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah. Hi, yeah, Steve. So long. How hey. long? How long you been there, Steve? I didn't see it till now. I just popped in. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. It's cool. time you've been there for an hour waiting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the voice of Gabnet. Hi. I keep going by your building in San Jose, it's the KQED, and I say, hey, I know Steve Fox. And they say, who the hell is that guy? Wait a minute, KQED, <laughs> KQED is in San Jose now? No, no. They, no, have, they a, have a building. Yeah, there's, they have a studio that's down there, but they use the whole building as, like, this is KQED, but it's not. Mm. So. Oh, I see. They, like, just put the naming rights on there. Yeah. 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 But San Francisco is where it's located. Mm. Yeah. They or, used to Crystal have a, Palace. Well, you see, they used Where? to. They used Where's to. Have, well, go ahead. <laughs> After you, Brian. No, you first. It's no, you sure. first. <laughs> no, where is that, Steve? You say Crystal Palace? No. <laughs> well, that's what they call it. It's it's been remodeled and everything. So, it they spent so much money on this place. It's just see that's it, what that's what now pissed, it's called the Fentanyl that's what, Palace. That, what, that's what pissed me off about KQED. I ran, you know, I ran for the uh, board of directors at one point. Oh. And I didn't win uh, because it's fixed. Okay? It's fixed. It really is. Believe oh, me. Huh. He's an employee there. Don't say that. Well, I'm not <laughs> expecting you to agree or disagree with me on this one. But anyway, the point <laughs> is that I, I, when I used to do my comedy tonight, I would go down to do voiceovers and things like that for the beginning of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, it was uh, just this huge warehouse building, but it was huge. It was the largest soundstage in San Francisco. And it was That's used for doing t TV commercials, like car commercials and so on, where you needed lots of stuff on, on the set at one time. And they got rid of that building and went and built this, this Taj Mahal, the one you're talking about. When I first they first moved in there, I knew about it, and I was going over there to do some voiceovers. And I said, why did you build this place? You had this other place. Well, that's just a dump over there. Who cares if it's a dump? This is public television. You know, yeah. who are you trying to impress? You know? In fact, if you live in a dump, everybody thinks you're really poor, and they'll keep giving you money. But if you live in this crystal palace, you know. I don't know. Trump lives in a crystal palace, and people keep giving him money. Why does it all come back to Trump with you? I don't know because I hate the guy. No, let's just for the for the next for this week, uh, this week you only. Actually brought him up. Make tonight, the punchline so. of all your jokes, Giuliani. Okay. Okay. All right. 
But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, but they built this this that, that, that place, and I just went, why why do you, why do we do this? You know, I said we because I was working for them after all. Yeah, you know. And one of my arguments when I was running for the board of directors was, look at what they spent on this on this place. Did we really need to do that? Couldn't that money have been better spent on programming? <laughs> Silly question. <laughs> If yeah. you really want to see what it looks like, uh, go to the website and mm -hmm. have the big picture that's up there. Yeah, yeah, we're really poor. Please send us your donations because uh, we need to keep KQED uh, non-commercial and, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, well, look at that building. You need money from me? Sell the doorknobs <laughs> for crying out loud. You know? <laughs> and then none of these opinions from the host reflect any of uh, I reflects nothing upon uh, Steve Fox who just calls his program innocently <laughs> and, thank uh, you <laughs> uh, wait a minute what was happening there that was Brian's uh, significant other yes handing him something oh okay what his wife to be was that was that was that the divorce papers oh <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it, it, if I die tomorrow it's from this what is it what is it uh, some Vietnamese coffee or something. What do you mean, some Vietnamese coffee, coffee. or something? Got a lot of milk in there. Yeah, I don't know. Well, some drink that she just well, gave to me. So did, did she put napalm in it? Maybe. <laughs> don't you have a bathroom in the office there that you're at? You can dump it and say, "Yo, oh, that was really good." I bet it's really good. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Wait a minute. It doesn't sound you like it is. Different. All right. You, you keep. You act like you're so put down. She's great. I see her post yeah, on Facebook. Great. Marry her. Oh. <laughs> she's been doing this all night long. Who said You know, that? my grandfather used to say, whenever I'd be with some girl, he'd say, oh, yeah, you're with that girl, uh, Joanne. Oh, Joanne. Oh, she's so nice. Oh, I really like her for you. Yeah, she, she, you and her would be really good together. Then next time I'd see him, my grandfather would say, oh, yeah, well, we broke up. Uh, he's, oh, how's Joanne? I said, oh, yeah, we broke up. He goes, yeah, I didn't like her for you anyways. Oh, this well, is no, bad. That, that's, that's what, that's what. He was always supportive. That's what. And yeah. Charlie's not supportive with me in my relationships. <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute. When, when I, when I broke up once, uh, I, I'm, told Penn Jillette I was really sorry and sad and so on and <laughs> distraught and he said well I never liked her anyway <laughs> oh. and I said you didn't I didn't know you didn't like her he says well no I, it's not whether I liked her or not you're my friend exactly. and she just dumped you so the best yeah. thing I can say to you it isn't like oh that's too bad she was so wonderful you don't do that <laughs> you don't do that what you do is you say I didn't like her anyway so but now that's cut, Charlie, when we end cut things, to Charlie's years gonna say, cut to years. Charlie's going to say, "Oh my God, really? How could you let her go?" And cut, I'm like, yeah. "Cut, cut to years later." I have, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, uh, you just said said the the name. What name? Angela. No. Uh, 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 Tony, Tony oh. calls my show. Oh yeah, yeah, at yeah. Sirius XM. And he says, I'm really sad today. I said, why? He says, my aunt died. He said, your aunt died? He said, yeah. So I'm thinking, hey, I'll take Penn Jillette's lead on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, you know what, Tony? I never liked her anyway. <laughs> now, of course, I never met the woman and in my life. he broke down in tears. He cried yeah. on the air. Oh my God! And the one thing, there's one rule in broadcasting: you can do anything you want to to a caller. You can yell at him, you can scream at him, but don't make them cry because the minute they cry, you've lost the audience. They're yeah, no longer on your guy. side. Yeah. Right? Oh, doesn't man. stand today, though, does it? Huh? <laughs> doesn't stand today, does it? <laughs> no. The idea is to make them cry. You make them cry. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, you know, I, um, so anyway, so, uh, but, uh, so Trump is having, going to have trouble finding money. It's going to be, we're waiting for Monday. I mean, I mean, he might pull it out at the last minute, uh, but 30 banks, I can't even think of 30 banks. It, I, I think the bank of Russia is going to lend him the money. Yeah. 
I think his friend Vlad's gonna. Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I hope he doesn't. You know, I get it. I, I would love but, to. But see. it's only for the appeal, right? So it's not like they lock him up, but then he just can't appeal, right? And, no, but then if they've got his money, let's say he, let's say he appeals, let's say he loses the appeal, which there's a, every chance he would, okay, mm-hmm. then he doesn't get that money back. No. Right, 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 right. You know, so if he put it out, he doesn't get it back. Not, I want to see the time where if he doesn't have the money, they're going to lock him up. That's where I yeah. want to see. <laughs> yeah. Will that happen is the question. <clears throat> it seems and like the government's gonna... really dragging their feet on all these court cases. Well, they're not, he's not, they're not dragging their feet. Here's what's happening. He keeps kicking the can down the road is yeah. what keeps happening. Yeah. You know, it's like if they could go to court tomorrow, they would. But, you know, they, they uh, every time they want to, he puts in some kind of little obstacle, yeah. you know. Uh, and, 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 and eventually, eventually, one of these cases is going to go to court, and one of these cases he's going to lose badly. Well, the judge in uh, Georgia just said that he has the right to appeal if Fannie Willis continues to be the DA in his case there. Who, no, who said that? A judge in in Georgia yeah. the news today. They said, "What is if Fannie Willis?" And he has the right to appeal. In other words, the ruling that said that she had to get rid of her ex boyfriend and Wait. she could stay on the case. I guess a different judge came in and said, "Okay, then Trump has the right to appeal that ruling." Well, how many judges are there even for crying he, out loud? Even though he got rid of her, or she right. got rid of him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's already gone. Gee, how much did it cost me? He gets to come back if he loses the appeal. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't keep track of this stuff. This all, is really- all I all I know is I think the one that's going to hurt him the most is the one that he's currently got to pay the money for. You know, <laughs> that and the uh, the one for what's her name? Uh, e. Jean Carroll. Yeah. E. Jean Carroll. Carroll. Yeah. Uh, he he did pay the uh, the. Um, money on that so he could appeal. 95 million or whatever it yeah, was. But that. he'll lose it because the the, the 95 million, the, the, the big chunk of that money came from the case where they were just giving him a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a, a penalty uh, based on the fact that he kept putting her down and, and defaming yeah, her. He wouldn't shut up. Yeah, he wouldn't <laughs> shut up. So, yeah. You notice lately he hasn't made a lot of comments about her. He's got other things to do, like make yeah. comments about my judge. Yeah. 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 They're, he's deranged. Don't you know that? You can almost predict what t- Trump is going to say f- t- for anything. Somebody is deranged. Somebody is crazy. They're immoral. You know, all the th- he, he accuses people of what he is. That's yeah. the yeah. strange That's part. That's true. Yeah. He switched over to Giuliani here on this show. Yeah. Well, Giuliani isn't. Big trouble. He doesn't have a penny to his name. Oh, yeah. He's already filed for bankruptcy in the court. Yep. Oh. Down. <laughs> his think... shoes are sold out still. I just checked. What, what shoes? By now. What shoes? Oh, what? The gold sneakers or whatever. I picked it. Yeah. Sold out? The sneakers oh, are sold out? Sold out. For, for what is it, 300 or $400 each? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, four ninety nine pre order. Super <laughs> limited, only 1,000 pairs. I think I'll buy a pair just to set them on fire. Don't take them <laughs> out the rain. Until July at the earliest. You yeah. take them out the rain, the Trump name washes off and you can see a swastika. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see I want to see him in jail without his hairdresser. I want to see the purple. <laughs> oh. Well, if you get a chance, just go to Jimmy Kimmel's show a couple of nights ago. Right. I had yeah. Did you see it? Uh-huh. Trump Trump in bed with Melania. Uh, <laughs> clipping his toenails and she was, yeah. she's picking them up nasty. and going Ew. that was nasty <laughs> really okay, yeah, it's, it's got to be on YouTube right? it's on YouTube it's on YouTube anyway hey listen the theme is playing that wow. means that our show is coming to a close this is a small little crowd here but it's a good group of people and we had a nice little discussion tonight and that's the way it should be now everybody else call every other night this week because this is getting ridiculous you know oh well this is fine six is fine 
I, I'm, I, I can live with that. Anyway, thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate your participation tonight, as uh, with Brian, as with Alan, as with our, uh, Kevin, and Steve Fox. Thank you so much for joining us as well. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you and say good night. There they go, folks. There's our citizen panel for tonight. Mm, there they go. Uh, listen, uh, uh, Amy Manuel is next. She's here with the. Uh, intersection she'll be on skype at gabnet live i'll see you again tomorrow night same time same station in life and in the meantime if you see her tell her i love her okay good night everybody